Hi guys, if banana says it's time to plant the hops, I guess it's time to plant the hops. <sighs> Let's do a beer review instead. Hi guys, I guess there's some time left here in Stockholm, Sweden before we can plant our hops this year. I was contacted by a guy called David. He has been watching my videos and uh, he had been brewing um, for quite a while. He was into like his 20th brew. Um, half of them had been extract and he had turned over to the all grain side. Um, so he had tried to brew this uh, orange porter, which chocolate orange porter even, which he wasn't that pleased with. So he asked me if I would like to taste it and see if uh, I could come up with any ideas or suggestions or something like that. And uh, I would gladly accept a bad beer as well, but I asked him if uh, maybe he could also send me a beer he was pleased with. So here we have one bad beer and one good beer from David. And this is the Mustafa Jaffa chocolate orange porter which comes in at 5.1%. And this is the bad beer. And the good beer is the Shiki Chiswick ESB. And this comes in at 6.9%. So it's a quite high ABV ESB. We want to have a look at the labels. Here's the label for the porter. And here is your ESB label. Nice labels there. So far so good David. And it comes in a not so sturdy pet bottle. This is a little bit sturdy. There's a huge headspace in the ESB one. So I'm thinking, let's start with a bad beer and then we can uh, turn over to the great beer or the beer David was pleased with. So let's use the Google Larsen opener. Uh, thanks for watching as always and cheers David for sending me some beers to try out. So let's get this one into a glass. These are bottle conditions. So I'm going to treat them as. Uh, nice hiss there, some smoke on the opening. Let's give it a pour, label out. So I'm going to stop it there. Okay, looks nice. Oh, maybe we should look at, look at the recipe. Or should we taste it first? Let's taste it first. <sighs> Doesn't smell that much. Can't pick out anything that should be off with it. The head has died off already. Let's see if I can build up a new one. Uh, it has a off-white beige foam. It's a dark looking beer, almost black, uh, with almost non-head retention. There is carbonation there, streaming up against the glass. Not so much on the nose. Some maltiness there. Okay, let's dive in. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not a uh, very nice beer. Mm. It has. It's a little bit weird. It's not super bad. Uh, it's a little bit watery. Mm. Have some. Fusel alcohols. 
a tiny bit of astringency, very thin body. Uh, let's uh, go through the recipe. See, the Mustafa Jaffa he used for a 21 liter batch 3.6 kilos of pale ale, 200 grams of special B, 300 grams of uh, brown malt, 200 grams of chocolate, 350 grams of crystal. And as a late addition, he added uh, marmalade, orange marmalade. Uh, hops wise, first gold at 70 and first gold at 10 minutes. And this was uh, fermented with Mangrove Jack's New World Strong Ale M42. He also added some cacao nibs, an orange peel steeped in vodka. That was added to the fermenter. I see here he also sent me a note. Uh, this chocolate brown has a, a note, side note, uh, which I'm uh, not used to. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so too. Uh, I would check your fermentation. Uh, maybe do you control your fermentation temperature? Uh, maybe add uh, two packs of yeast instead of one pack. And uh, of course, see to it that you have enough oxygen for your yeasties. And of course, that second pack of yeast will uh, help if you don't get uh, as much oxygen in your wort. I also think that uh, top mashing the dark grains would have got, got ridden of that uh, little astringent note, but I think the main problem with this brew is the uh, fermentation. I think that's that. Don't really know what else I can say, David. There's almost a licorice candy like taste to it as well. It's not awful, it's not that, but it's a little bit weird. So let's put that one aside. And uh, this has a huge headspace in there. Let's crack it open. It's a great hiss and the beer is trying to climb out. No, I think we're safe. This is definitely more carbonated than the other one. Okay, uh, maybe the carbonation kicked up the yeast in the bottle because this one looks very, very murky. Uh, it has a two finger off white head uh, with very large inconsistent size bubbles. It is if I hold it up to uh, the light. Red like a uh, ESB, um, like a Fuller's, but it's very murky. And uh, murky and darker beers don't look that attractive, at least not to me. Uh, a hazy pale Nipa that can be very inviting and even uh, hazier like orangey colored beer could be inviting as well. Uh, the heads are dissipating. Get some peaks and valleys there. Pick that up from Brad. Uh, okay, let's give it a nose. Yeah, you can smell that ESB, the can't go links. Smells nice. Okay, let's dive in before we check the recipe and uh, 
obviously his notes. Okay, cheers guys, cheers David. Yeah, you get that ESB taste. Um, don't really want to compare it with the uh, Fuller's, but you have the East Kent Golding, you have the malt, it's a little bit chewy, much more breadier, a little bit yeasty. Uh, think the yeast got kicked up uh, of the overcarbonation. It's very carbonated. It's a little bit alcoholic, uh, not in a bad way, uh, like this one when, when you have this high alcohols, the fusel alcohols, um, but it's a little bit too strong, I think. Um, but it is a nice brew, uh, so maybe as bring it a little bit down so you don't get that alcohol taste to it and uh, there was some issues there with the bottle uh, it was enormous headspace and the g's got kicked up i guess if this had been kegged instead it would have been much nicer let's check the recipe this is for a 23 liter batch 5.2 kilos of Mary's Otter, 250 grams of Crystal 100, 300 grams of uh, torrefied wheat, 150 grams of amber malt, 200 grams of aromatic malt, and 100 grams of chocolate malt. He used Target, Challenger, North Down, East Kent Golding, East Kent Goldings, and Target. Uh, the second East Kent Golding and the Target was the Dry Hop. So it really sounds like uh, ESB, uh, maybe not so much on the malt bill there, but on the hops. You don't have to go that complicated with uh, ESB. Maybe as the, the base malt and uh, some crystal and chocolate for color. Of course you can add some wheat for head retention but you don't really need that I think with the crystal malt in there um, and this was fermented with the WLP 002 at 20 degrees uh, and this was okay. This was an attempt of a clone of a Fuller's East B, uh, and it is a little bit stronger than he was planning. So then I guess I should compare it to a Fuller's. Should have a Fuller's here, side by side, an East B. Um, I think I have one. I did have a Fuller's ESB, um, didn't plan this video out, maybe I uh, should start reading my notes before this video, but uh, I feel that it's kind of cool to give my impressions without reading too much, but maybe I should. So let's use this iron opener for the ESB small hiss there I hope everyone know how a full Ugh. sorry I hope everyone knows have a how a fuller's ESB taste um, so I got a little to none head on this one uh, it's actually something wrong with this one no little to none of a hiss and uh, no head it has carbonation but not that much uh, but this ain't my first fuller's ESB so I guess we'll be fine so let's compare these two and this is a little bit colder 
This is much more sweeter, toffee-like. <sighs> Diacetyl, maybe, it's a little hint of that. And this is much more of the East Kent Goldings. That <sighs> so strong fragrance. Okay, let's dive in. Yeah, it's much more sweet. It tastes really sweet now after drinking this, which is much more drier. Let's see what it ended. Um, OG 1064, FG 1011. And that's quite a fermentation. Uh, using the WLP002, I think, from 1064 to 1011. So this is much more hoppier. As I said, breadier, yeastier, more alcohol in this one. And this is like a... It's more like a cookie, if I compare it with this one. This has a greater body, sweeter, lacks a little bit in hops from this one. I would say to use a little bit more of the East Kent Goldings and this one. So hops wise, I do prefer this one. It could be a little more bitter. This could be a little bit off, I think. I don't remember my Fuller's East B being exactly that sweet and I do remember it to be a little bit more bitter. There were clearly some troubles here with the bottle. That just shows that um, even commercial bottles can struggle from uh, the bottling process or the handling and so on. Um, so guys, I think I'm gonna end it there. The ESB was the better brew. I uh, can agree with you there, David, uh, but um, I would simplify the malt bill uh, and 1064 sounds a little bit high. Uh, don't really know why you got that attenuation from 1064 with, uh, to 1011 with the WP002. Uh, you did not mash that low. So you should maybe try it again. But next time, try it with a base malt, crystal and uh, some chocolate malt for color. Otherwise than that, don't have any more suggestions for you. But try the Cheeky Cheese Week ESB and uh, David's uh, Mustafa Jaffa Porter. So if anyone else wants to send me beer mail, I gladly accept them. I will put my contact information down below so you can contact me there. So I guess that's that. Nothing more to say about the brews. So cheers guys, thanks for watching and cheers David for sending me your beers to try out. Dr. Hans out.